McLeod. Welcome to Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 12th of January, 2022. Um, oh, sorry, Daniel. Yes, I should have, should have had you there. Thanks. All right, so topics on the agenda I've got for the today news. Uh, end of your blog post draft, just for information's sake. Administrative access, don't know if we'll have that topic. Much more to do on it. Google Summer of Code, She Code Africa Contributathon, and highlights from the mailing list. Any other topics that you need to add? Okay, then let's go ahead. So first topic was uh, the security releases today. Oh yes, thank you very much, Vadek. Uh, that's great. After having so, waiting that multiple times today, it's easier to, to think about the version. <laughs> much appreciated. Well, and, and maybe you could share with us briefly, Vadek. Uh, give us a one or two sentence update on how the, the security release, etc. So. It's done. It's released for both the weekly and the LTS. Thanks very much. Even with some surprises that we created in the infrastructure. So, yeah, we got multiple surprises. Uh, the first one was on Monday. There was a plugin that was released despite there was a security release. So we have to restage that plugin. And we were like, uh, yeah, okay, it was a plugin up for adoption. So not a, a big deal, but that happened again on Tuesday, the morning. And the afternoon, we got the, that unexpected weekly that was triggered. So we restage multiple times, multiple things during the release. At the end, that's a good experience. Uh, we have uh, discovered some things, some uh, weird uh, corner case in the process. With my new role, I expect to be able to push more um, automation, more uh, simpler process, different rules for different things to, to simplify a bit the work. Because honestly, as a newbie coming there, I don't want to have that job. It's so complicated, so so complex in general. It's something that has to be uh, simplified. Otherwise, I will be officer for uh, for life because I accepted the, by uh, by chance, I will say or not. But uh, yeah, that's a bit the, the issue there. We have to to simplify a bit the thing for us, but also for the different people being uh, involved without uh, being voluntarily involved, I will say, because they are just maintaining a plugin that need to be also simplified for them. And we got a great support from the Infra team for the uh, different configuration, stabilization in general. So that was great. In terms of content, that's interesting to have seen uh, one core change that's not really impacting a lot of people. It's mainly for people without the security room being configured in the sense, if you run it only for your local network, we don't expect anyone with a team or a company using that uh, no security room approach. So not a big impact, but if you're in that situation, it's pretty big impact, I will say. Otherwise, multiple uh, plugins, I think we got, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly, uh, more than 10 plugins in total. Uh, it's just uh, a lot of plugins with at least three high vulnerability that were corrected, and also around 10 plugins that were not corrected, so mainly unmaintained plugin. We have uh, depublished some of the plugin as well. So uh, trying to clear a bit the, the list of plugins. And that's all for the news, I will say. Thanks for the, the tweet, uh, Mark, especially about the detail that you extracted from the information there. Uh, that's something we, we should be able to provide next time if you want. So that could be more useful than you having to do that manually. Well, thank you for doing it. Thanks very much to you and to Daniel both. Thank you, thank you to the security team. I, I appreciate Gavin's note here. We, we did have infra issues and, and it's, it's correct. We had to do some, some fixes or some workarounds for things that ultimately we wanna solve. And, and so thanks very much to the infra team also. Yeah, I specifically want to throw that out there because, you know, the Jenkins.io had issues. Actually, I think Jenkins.io is running somewhere else, but plugin site is having issues. Some of the Docker images weren't able to release. You know, Pat, there's all kinds of things that were affecting all kinds of things. And it's good to just document that it happened. And we're seeming to be back on track now. Right. Well, and, and there is more to be learned from it. And I think there are still more fixes yet to be done. Go ahead, Barak. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, Mark, for ever mentioned that. But uh, yeah, huge thank you for Daniel. Actually, we spent 
80% of the day together. So I completely forgot that we did that. Uh, with uh, what to say that uh, I was thinking about the Infra team in particular, but yeah, Daniel was the necessary mentor doing this uh, trip. So uh, thank you, Daniel. Thanks very much. All right. So next topic or any other news items oh yes i take it back we had one that we sort of got past preview sites are now available on www.jenkins.io pull requests that means you in order to review how a pull request looks you no longer have to actually run the site yourself locally thanks very very much to gavin for his his effort on that it makes things much much better when you can see how the site will look just by clicking the view deployment button that becomes available on every yeah. Jenkins.io pull request. Especially for new docs or like bolding or stylistic changes that are just, yeah. Yeah, it, it is, it's a, it's a thing of beauty. I am, I am so pleased with it and yeah, thanks very, very much. So examples like, okay, guess what? Here's a pull request and take this pull request and now I can see a, okay, this is a terrible, horrible thing to see all these changes. And how do I know how they look? Well, view deployment takes me to this site and I say, yes, there we are. And now I've got the full site ready to go and ready to look around to see how does it look? What are the parts and the pieces of it? All of that. Gavin, thank you very, very much. This made life much, much better for authors on Jenkins.io. Any other topics in the news section? Okay, next topic then was end of year blog post. Oleg reminded uh, that, oh, whoops. Oleg reminded us that we need an end of year blog post. And- oh, Keep uh, going, Mark. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so that end of year blog post has has been a working copy started and suggestions have been received on the mailing list. Thanks very much for those suggestions. If you have others, please include them. I'm sorry that I'm a little slow getting it generated. In previous years, we had it done pretty consistently by the 10th day of the new year. Uh, this, this year, it may be end of this week before I'm done with it. Uh, I'll look for reviews and comments. It will be at least another day before I submit a a pull request with it. And thanks very much for everyone's help. The exercise of reviewing 2021 reminded me just how many things happened in 2021 for the Jenkins project and how many impressive outcomes we've had as a result of work done by various people in the community. Thanks. So next topic is just a carryover from last time. I still have an action item to get the, uh, the license agreement, uh, the contributor license agreement worked out with Linux Foundation for one piece of, of that. Google Summer of Code is coming. Alyssa Tong and Jean-Marc Meeson are leading the effort, being tutored and guided by Oleg. And they've got 10 plus project ideas collected already. We're looking for more project ideas, more mentors and looking forward to launching that as, as the year goes forward. Any questions or concerns there, please bring them to the advocacy and outreach SIG where those are, that's discussed in more detail. Next topic was SheCode Africa Contributhon. And th this was an event we did last year we mentored five women from Africa as on their first contributions to open source. They're changing the program slightly this year, moving it out one month and broadening the time that it takes. Uh, so we, also, we started the planning in docs office hours and we'll do more discussions in a wider uh, location on community.jenkins.io in the upcoming time so that we can get project ideas, we can get assure that we've got good sponsorship. We're, we'll be looking for some funding to, to do it, not from the Jenkins project, but from commercial companies. So we think CloudBees will fund and there may be others who want to fund as well. Do we know what the typical hours are 
because that's that's whenever we ask for volunteers that's my biggest thing is being so far west coast it's hard for me to know how much i can contribute so right and and this one this one is a very good one to understand that because the the most typical times that work for these contributors tend to not work well for us west coast yeah and and that's that's a good practical thing for us to be sure that we note to people it works well for europe because Africa is largely aligned with many of the European time zones. Uh, it does not work as it doesn't really work at all for mentors from Australia, for instance. We yeah. really need mentors sort of biased towards Europe and US East Coast. So yeah, just for future knowledge of posting for asking for volunteers, we should be aware of that. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, and that's a good one for us to remind people of. We don't want to put someone into a condition where they're volunteering to mentor and then realize, and they have to do it in the middle of their night or the wee hours of their morning. Good point. Because yeah, some of us sleep. I mean, not you and me, but some people here sleep. <laughs> yes, right. Any questions there? Okay. Next topic then. Highlights from the mailing lists. Oh, this reminds me. Sorry, I'm I'm butting in. Uh, Go ahead. The Ruby and Python, because we did that over the, the end of the year. Oh, yes. Right, right. Exactly. January 22. Thank you very much. We should note that. 2022, January 22, 2022, is the removal of JRuby and Jython-based plugins from Update Center. Right, that's what we've announced. Announced a month, announced at end of December, 2021. And uh, in first implementation happened um, to mark, mark them as deprecated, I think in early January. And I think it was literally the last day of the year, but it was very oh, close. Okay, great, yeah, so in late December, thank you, yeah. And, and I've not seen any concern or angst about that one. So I'm, I'm glad to, to see it's, it seemed to be progressing well. And the next step, I believe, is a pull request to the update center for not merged until January 22. To actually like stop distributing them? Oh, yeah, I think so. I yeah, know. so it's to remove them or and, and I apologize, I'm not using the right word, the right verb to describe what happens there. The deprecation has already happened, a, but I... It's a notice, I got confused by this too. We're not suspending distribution, we're noticing that we they will be deprecated, I believe. Well, that's what we have done. So there are the deprecations, that's where it currently is, and the separate file called artifact ignores but I generally call that just suspending distribution. Yeah. And so we will just move their entries from deprecations into suspensions and then they're gone. Okay. So, so just... more succinctly, we've put a warning in. Sorry, we put a warning in, but we haven't actually stopped distribution yet. Right. Right. So one thing, um, did we did we deprecate all of the downstream plugins as well, or just the two runtimes? As far as I know, we deprecated all downstream plugins. But I'll. It's a. It's an easy thing to check. Let me do a quick check here live while we're in the session, because the GitLab hooks plugin is one example. Let's see if it shows deprecated. It does. Great. Okay. So it's not even, so we minimize the risk of admins thinking they're unaffected because they use GitLab hook and have never heard of Ruby runtime. Okay, right. Great. Right. So this thing, in addition to having two security vulnerabilities is also now officially deprecated. I'm so happy this is on the plugin site now. Yeah. Thanks very much. That's not and, mine, but that was, that was not one of my changes, but I'm very happy that it's in there. Right. So the other is if we look, just let's take one other sample just to be sure. Yes, Cappy Tomcat, whatever it is, is deprecated. Good. All right. So, so we do still have the change that will need to be need to happen as announced January twenty two, and 
Daniel, you said that's just a, a change from one file to another to say, instead of just warning, it's we're going to stop distribution completely. Right. Uh, so we cut and paste some text and that's it. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Anything else on the removal of JRuby and Jython based plugins? Okay, next topic then is, is highlights from the mailing lists and community forums. So, oh yes, that's a good one. I threw that in there. I didn't know if that's in highlights or not, but yeah. I, I think it should be, absolutely. So we've got the Java 8 end of life uh, that's being discussed actively. I intend to write the Jenkins enhancement proposal to outline a plan to do that deprecation, to do that end of life. The, dis the time frames that are being discussed now are either the June 2020, 2021, 2022, or September 2022 LTS. And the question is, which of those is the best fit for Jenkins users and for Jenkins developers? Uh, for your info, Oracle has declared that their premier support for Java 8 ends in March of 2022, but extended support goes until 2030. And Red Hat says they'll support Java 8 until May of 2026. So it's not that we're really in any risk of having Java itself not be supported by the vendors, but there is clearly a horizon where Oracle is saying, hey, this is changing modes for us in March of 2022. Any comments, concerns, or questions there on Java 8 end of life? So one thing, I, I don't know whether I send it to the dev list as well, but um, it would be useful for us to decide whether we want to adapt our usual process in some manner here, or whether we just treat it as any other enhancement. We merge it at some point and it ends up in uh, in LTS within the next quarter or so. Um, to better understand, you know, what the, what the impact is. For example, as, as an example, right? We might decide, and I am absolutely not advocating for this, just to be clear, we might decide let's keep supporting the last Java 8 compatible LTS line for longer than the usual three months so that users on Java 8 get more time to upgrade uh, their Java version, um, which I don't think we should do, but it would be an additional argument to say, yeah, if you're on Java 8, you just keep using that line and uh, work on the migration some other time. Uh, and we can just integrate it into whatever uh, weekly release we want because it's not as jarring as an experience to upgrade, as an example. So if we decide not to do that, perhaps a bit more runway after the announcement uh, is, is useful. Mm. Good. I'm also not in favor of the extended line. For me, anyone who isn't going to upgrade Java is not likely to upgrade Jenkins. And I don't think we need to put the effort into supporting that small, tiny use case of people that update regularly but won't update their dependencies. Okay, we got cleaned good. up stats, right? Sorry? We got the cleaned up JVM version numbers now. Yeah, I think someone fixed that. Yeah. Yeah, and it was it was a significant portion that have well, it was a, a relevant portion. I don't remember if we we've yet achieved achieved majority greater than fifty percent running Java eleven, but it was much more than the five percent that we saw a year ago. Uh, yeah, it's uh, we seem to be up to around thirty percent or so. But it's also, um, they don't have to upgrade, so they probably won't upgrade, right? It's right. Well, and, and given the operating system packages, they don't mandate a Java version. So, so for, for example, 
the dev package and the RPM, they just use whatever job I have configured. Good, all right. Anything else on Java 8 end of life? Okay, next topic then. Uh, oh, and I should, Daniel. UI modernization is continuing and you can see it already in Jenkins 2.330 includes uh, many changes, uh, more to come. Uh, see the pull requests for the changes, the changes that are happening. Daniel, I, I saw, for instance, that you had given some good feedback to, to Jan on a, some specific topics. And uh, it to me, it looks very encouraging that we're making progress there. Yep. Uh, we also uh, have a regression fix ready for the narrow configuration forms. Oh, so that's, good. That, that, that one's a bit fun because... Um, change log feedback indicates that the narrower configuration forms are so bad that people had to downgrade again, which I cannot quite believe, but um, that's what uh, the weather report in the change log says. So we have a regression fix for that ready and it will go into the next weekly. So that would be 233.1. Yeah. Excellent, thanks very, very much. Yeah, that, that is a, that, it's a fun indicator that, wow, a narrower, a narrower entry form caused people to mark it as I abs absolutely downgraded weekly. Wow, okay, thank you. Uh, it would be nice to see, I mean, this is something Daniel who goes, or Mark who goes to every meeting ever, uh, it might be nice to see some of this kind of uh, announcements in the form a bit more. Not something we need like a formal blog post for, but a bit more screenshots to see what's coming. You know, always, I know we're not getting a lot of feedback on PRs from external people, but the more we do it, the more people will see them, the more they'll, you know, get feedback. Because I didn't know this was happening. I've been a little bit out of it and haven't been following, so... Good, good point. And this is a, this is a really good time to do it because the baseline has not been selected for the next LTS yet. And so this is a really great time for us to encourage people to come try this, give us their feedback if they detect a problem so that we can assure that the next, next LTS has a good baseline for the, the user experience. Yeah. So, and your community and were you thinking other locations, Gavin? No, I'm, I mean, I mean, yeah, no, I think, Honestly, uh, a post or two on the community site with just some screenshots saying, you know, these are some things that are, are have been implemented because some people don't do weeklies and some mm -hmm. things that are coming. We would like feedback, maybe some links to some PRs, just so that people, if they're curious, can see it. And then, you know, if anyone outside of the meetings is interested, they can share it on social media if they want, but I don't think we should spend a lot of effort doing it. I just want to give people the opportunity who don't follow every PR. Good, yeah, I like that. Good suggestion, thanks. Good excuse for a, a sort of a quick screencast from, from a desktop with a little bit of narration to say, hey, look at this, compare this old to this new. I mean, I wouldn't even go that far. I would post a couple of screenshots and be good, but I mean, you do you, you know. Great, all right. Anything else on UI modernization? I'm good. Okay, next topic then is migrations to GitHub. And so infra issue tracking is moving to GitHub. Moved. Uh, has moved, right, past yeah. tense. It Correct. did finish the, the merge yesterday. Um, people are, uh, some of the infra team members have gotten a lot of emails. I assume you have as well, Mark, but- Yes, uh, I have. Yeah, a lot of emails that got all got migrated over. Uh, I think people are generally pretty happy in both cases that you can have the new forms, the new GitHub issue forms, so we can be a lot more pushy on what fields get filled out and how. Yeah, so um, working well. Now, we still have to, we, we don't do security issues through GitHub. Right, and so that's a that's still 
continues the pattern we've had in the past that security issues go through JIRA because we can keep them private, but general infra issues, hey, this or that issue, GitHub issue forms are actually easier and more accessible for many of our users. And then well, and it doesn't have the weird catch 22 that uh, I have a problem with Jenkins project infrastructure. Yes, use this piece of Jenkins project infrastructure to report the problem. Yeah, right. I, and, can't, and, I can't activate my account. Uh, cool. Good luck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A good, good point on the catch 22, right? No, no, no mandate that you must have a Jenkins.io account in order to tell us about a problem with Jenkins.io. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Log in to report that LDAP has problems. Good luck. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and please tell us how that worked for you. Yeah. And so then, uh, one, one thing about the forms, would that make a useful addition to the got, .github repository for the org-wide pull request templates and such? Are pull requests also controlled by this or is it just issues? I believe they are, and but I'm not sure that, I think that Tim and Erve are both considering that and thinking how it might apply. I'm not sure that they're ready to, to put it as far as pull requests to Jenkins plugins, for instance. So yeah, okay, it's a good cool. question. Uh, if uh, it's if it's being considered, yeah, that's great. And I believe it's still somewhat evolving. I think uh, the new issues UI is only just now released. So. Well, yeah, the the if I understand correctly, the forms thing is a relatively new thing. It, yeah. Relatively new, as in like twelve months or less. Oh, I think weeks. Oh, okay, good. All right. Um, yeah. So I think it's still evolving, and but I think they're, uh, they're the two of them are leading the charge and seem to be doing pretty slick work. So. Yeah. Thanks very much to to Tim, Jacome, and to Erve. With due apologies that I never, I my keyboard does not have an easy way to do the correct accented character for Erve's name. Sorry about that. And then I also threw in, uh, Tim has migrated, uh, Tim has also migrated the hosting repo to GitHub. Um, the good thing about that is it's now fully uh, user, what's it called, re-triggerable. So in the past, whenever there was issues with hosting requests and we had to wait, we had, someone had to trigger the bot and then, you know, you make a change, you trigger the bot again. And all that is now done through GitHub Actions and, and you know, with the forums and the drop downs, and they make sure that people have Jira accounts and Artifactory accounts before we even attempt to start the hosting process. So, you know, there are a couple of minor changes there, but it's a lot easier to integrate and deploy and a lot less copy and pasting everywhere. So we haven't had any new uh, hosting requests. We've had a couple, um, what is it, what is it called? Uh, they're moving something out of core, um, splitting off. Like, so just some libraries that got split off. They're not really new plugins. So nothing Java, really... Java mail and such. Yeah. Right. So nothing really new testing out the new flow. So we'll have to see how that goes with like regular new people, but it seems to work better, um, mostly for the common integration. Um, and I do have like six, uh, hosting requests that I'm way behind on that I got to finish reviewing and get out the door and then we can move everything into GitHub. But you Excellent. can't create new requests. We can only uh, finish the old ones. And since you mentioned it, Mark, the problem that we have with security issues is there are no per issue permissions on uh, GitHub. So um, we cannot use a regular uh, um, GitHub issue tracker as a replacement. Even, even if we were to make it a private repository, we basically would need one private repository for a combination of reporter and maintainers, which seems kind of silly. Right, okay. Uh, so, and, but for me, that, that actually reminds why I'm so in love with, okay, I'm gonna show another thing from Gavin's work on the, on the site. This report an issue page that's available gives me a way to, to report a bug and it will go to GitHub if the plugin is using GitHub or it will go to Jira to report a security issue. 
And, and that page is, for me, has been just a great benefit of, okay, this, if you want to report a security issue, click this button and it will take you to the right place to do it. Yeah, very good point. Also not one of my changes, but also a really good change. Oh, it's not one of yours? Oh, nope. sorry. I thought no. I, I added I made the link say Jira, but that's about all I did. <laughs> that's cool. Well, so thrilled with the, the result. That's all that I had for today. Are there other topics we need to discuss before we conclude the meeting? Uh Okay, well, I mean, Oleg, Oleg did reply to the thing. He's still working on getting ECCLA, which we covered. Uh, CDF has not yet been accepted into the inclusive naming initiative. Um, and he's working Ooh. on that. Ah, okay. All right. So that's, that's an item for up above. Let me put a note on that. Okay, so inclusive naming. I'd missed that one. So inclusive naming... Yeah, the sentence is CDF has not yet been accepted to the inclusive naming naming initiative. Interesting. Okay. And he's having chats about that. Okay, great. And then we did have discussion on the mail list about uh, Twitter, um, and it's more of an advocacy topic. So I think I'm going to leave it for that. But there is talks about having uh, Twitter as coding. So that is a little bit more, uh, what is it, what would it be, uh, more auditable and right. like that. without going into any of the real details from the post. Right. A better governance, better audit, et cetera. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. And on the inclusive naming topic, She Code Africa is very much interested in assisting us with inclusive naming changes. They, they would love to be involved. Uh, they, and we'll include that, plan to include that as a proposed project. Anything else for today? No, not bad for a month of not having any meetings. Yeah. All right, thanks everybody. Recording will be available probably in about 24 hours. Thanks very, very much. Thank you very much.